Don't even get me started on why you would need a VPN. If you're using the internet, you need a VPN. End of story. If you don't know what a VPN is and what it does, here's a simple explanation. When you're browsing the internet, the data that you're sending to different websites and different apps can be seen and monitored by your internet service provider and other third parties like your government and different authorities. They can see what websites you're visiting, your activity on those websites, and they can also limit your access to certain websites or apps. By using a VPN, you're basically inserting a node between your ISP and the internet. All the data that you're sending to the internet is first encrypted by the VPN app that is running on your device and then it is forwarded to the VPN server where the data is decrypted and then forwarded to the destination website or the app that you're trying to access. In this way, your ISP and your government cannot monitor your internet activity and they also cannot block your access to certain websites as they wish. Also, hackers who might have exfiltrated your network cannot sniff your data because all the data that is passing in your network is actually encrypted by your VPN app. So they can't make sense of it until they decrypt it and the decryption will not happen on the network it's going to happen on the VPN server so there's no way a hacker can steal your data by gaining access into your network so in short VPNs are supposed to keep you safe and protect your privacy on the internet now there are many VPNs that you can just download to your device purchase a subscription and then you can just start using it right away and some of the VPNs are even free of cost, you can just use them without paying anything. But there's always one problem when you're using a VPN. You're blindly trusting your VPN company with your data. You're basically forwarding all your internet traffic to your VPN server and trusting them to not try to take a sneak peek into your data and to not store it or to not sell it to a third party or hand it over to a government agency. Because technically they can do all this stuff. They can look at your data, they can store your data, or they can just sell your data to a third party bidder or just hand it over to a government agency. Remember, your data is actually being encrypted by your VPN, so they can decrypt it as well. Although most VPNs claim that they have a strict no log policy, meaning that they will not store your data, they will not uh, sell your data or they will not give your data to a government agency. But we still cannot trust them completely because we do not know what's happening on their backend because we can't see it. And actually there are multiple instances where a supposedly no log VPN is caught sharing users data with government agencies. So that's definitely not trustworthy, is it? We can't just take the word of a VPN company and just blindly trust them. So I decided I should make my own VPN. And you should probably do it too. Unless you don't really care about your privacy and you're just using a VPN to access some blocked content and stuff like that. But if you really do care about your internet privacy and you don't want to be monitored by anyone, then building your VPN, your own VPN, is probably the best option you have. And you don't have to be a technical genius to do this. In this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to create your own VPN server. The idea is to rent a Linux server from a cloud provider. In this case, we'll be using Linode, the sponsors of this video, and to install a open source VPN software on that server, and then we can connect to that VPN server by installing the client version of that app on all our devices. Now, obviously renting a computer or a virtual machine on the internet is going to cost you money, but I do have a good news for you. You can do this all for free of cost for a limited amount of time because Linode is going to give you $100 worth credits for you for free of cost if you use my link in the description below. So go check out the link in the description below and sign up for Linode using that link. And once you sign up, you'll automatically get a $100 credit into your account just like that, using which you can create a Linux virtual machine on Linode. Okay, so once you have signed up on Linode, the first thing you would need to do is to install OpenVPN, which is basically an open source VPN software that we'll be installing on our Linode instance. So on your Linode dashboard, go to Marketplace. So basically on this page, you will find different apps which you can install on your Linode in just one click. So select OpenVPN because this is a software that we are going to install on our Linux server and then scroll down and you can just uh, um, skip this advanced options and then you have to select an image for your operating system. So I will select DBN 11 and then 
you have to select a region. Now this is very important. Uh, whatever the region that you select here is where your VPN server is going to be located. So once you create your VPN and once you are connected to your VPN, your internet traffic is basically going to originate from this location. So be careful in choosing this location, choose the location which you want. For example, if I select Atlanta here, whenever I try to access internet from this VPN, it seems like my internet connection or my internet traffic is originating from Atlanta. So choose whatever the location you like. I'm just going to set it, set it to default Atlanta. And now it's time for you to select the Linode plan. So you don't have to choose a dedicated CPU. This is going to cost you a lot more compared to shared CPU. So we don't need a dedicated CPU. We can just go to shared CPU. And here there are different uh, plans that you can subscribe to. The first plan is the Nanode one GB, which is the most basic plan. It costs you $5 per month. So in my case, I'm going to select the second option, which is Linode two GB. And this one has two GB of RAM and one CPU. You can go with the one GB instance as well, but I'm going to go with the two GB instance because uh, it has more RAM, which means it will be much faster than the one GB machine. So anyway, uh, that's it. Now you can just scroll down and you can give your Linode a label. So in this case, I'll just put it as open VPN. You can just label it whatever you want, whatever you want it to be. It's basically like a name. And then you need to choose a root password. A root password is basically the password which you'll be using to sign in to your machine via SSH. I recommend you choose a strong password. And then you can also add an SSH key if you want to directly um, connect to the machine via SSH without entering any password. That's completely optional. So yeah, basically that's all you need to configure. Just click on create Linode and it's going to take a little bit of time to spawn up your uh, Linode and then install your, the open VPN on your Linode. Okay, so once your Linode is spawned up, you will see the status as running. So the next step is to configure your open VPN, which is installed on this Linode. So in order to do that, you will find your public IP address, which is this in my case, just copy your public IP address open a new tab and then go to https colon slash slash followed by your public IP address followed by colon and then 943. So basically OpenVPN's uh, web interface is going to run on the port 943. So by, by going to this port, we can actually access the web app of OpenVPN and we can configure it with that app. So you'll be seeing a message like this that says connection is not private. So you can just ignore this message, click on advanced and select proceed. And this should bring you to your open VPN web app, which looks like this. So you'll be presented with a user login, but we don't want to log in as a user yet because we still haven't created a user yet. So the first thing you would need to do is to configure your open VPN access server. And in order to do that in the URL, change this to slash admin, and that should bring you the admin panel, the admin login like this. So the username for this is going to be OpenVPN and the password for this is actually randomly generated when you are installing uh, OpenVPN access server. So in order to find this password, you actually need to log into your machine and you have to read a file where that password will be stored. So in order to do that, come back to your Linode dashboard and here you will see a command for SSH access. So basically by using this SSH command, you can log in to your created Linode. So copy that command and open up your Windows terminal and inside this Windows terminal, just paste that command and it's going to ask you for your password. So it's going to ask you for the root password. Just enter the root password which you have uh, chosen while creating the Linode. I'll enter mine. So now that I've logged into my server, I need to now find out the admin password for my OpenVPN. And in order to do that, you can read this file slash user slash local slash openvpn underscore as slash init.log. So this file will contain the randomly generated password for your OpenVPN admin account. So if I cat that out, it should show you the password. So you can see here it says to log in, please use the OpenVPN account with this password. So we already know that the username is OpenVPN as mentioned here, and this is the password that we'll have to use. So I'm gonna copy that password and I'm gonna paste it here and click on sign in. Now, obviously if you want to change your uh, admin account password, you can do that from the same SSH window. But anyway, I'm not going to do that now. 
So here I can just click on agree. This is how the OpenVPN access server dashboard will look like. So you can see that it says clearly that two VPN connections are allowed. This means that only two parallel connections will be allowed if you're using a free version of OpenVPN access server. But if you want to connect more devices, you can click on get activation key and I think you have to uh, purchase an activation key, some license key, uh, you know, if you want to add more devices. But I think for a general use case, two parallel VPN connections are all you would need. At least in my case, that's all I would need. Anyway, so now go to user management and click on user permissions. And here you will see that there's already one user added to this server. So I can add one more user and I will do that. I'll set the username and then I will click on more settings. And over here I can set a password. I'm going to set a password, a strong password here. And also you can make this user as admin by clicking on this checkbox and you can also enable auto login for this user. So once you're done making these changes, click on save settings and that's going to save the settings. But in order to actually push these settings to the actual running server, you have to click on update running server. So what this is going to do is it's going to push whatever changes you have made to the actual running server so that the changes will be propagated. So now you can see we have two users and you can add as many users as you want, but you can only um, have two parallel VPN connections at any given point of time. Keep that in your mind. The last thing you need to do is go to configuration and click on VPN settings. And over here, make sure that this option which says, should client internet traffic be routed through the VPN, make sure that this is set to yes, because we actually want to um, route all our internet traffic through this VPN. So you have to make sure that this option is set to yes. And that's it. That's all about configuring your OpenVPN access server. So in order to actually connect your devices to the server, you can first log out from your admin panel and then just remove slash admin from the end. And this will present you with the user login screen. Now I'm going to log in with the new user which I've created. So in this screen, it will present you with the options to download the OpenVPN Connect application, which is basically a client-side app using which you can connect to the OpenVPN server. So it is available for all the operating systems. It's available for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, and iOS. So since I'm using Windows, I'm going to download the Windows version of it. So once it's downloaded, you can just install it. You can see this installation wizard. Just follow the on-screen instructions to install OpenVPN Connect on your PC. So there you go, the application has successfully installed. And in here, you can see that there's already one OpenVPN profile, which is bundled with this installation. And this is actually the profile of my user, which is Teja. So in this case, since my profile is already loaded into the app, I don't have to do anything else. But if you are using any other application other than OpenVPN Connect to connect to your OpenVPN server, in that case, you will need your OpenVPN profile file. And you can download that profile uh, file from your user dashboard you can see that there are two options. One is to download the user logged profile and the second one is to download the auto login profile. So you can download whatever the profile you like. If we just click on it, it will begin downloading it. Now you can just import this profile to your client application and then connect to your OpenVPN server. But in my case, it's not required because OpenVPN Connect already comes with my profile loaded into it. So in order to connect to my VPN server, all I have to do is to click on it and that's going to connect to my VPN server. And there you go, it is connected now. In order to cross check this, I will just uh, Google my IP. And this is actually the IP address of my Linode instance. I will show it to you clearly. You can see that my public IP address matches with the IP address of my Linode, which means my internet traffic is successfully routed through my VPN server, which is what we want. Awesome. That means we have successfully configured our VPN server and we are able to use our VPN server from the OpenVPN Connect app. So I did a quick internet speed test and you can see that I'm getting a speed of around 39 Mbps, which is definitely not bad considering that I'm only paying five to ten dollars per month for this uh, to host this VPN server and uh, it's honestly better than most of the other VPN services which cost you like I don't know 15 to 20 dollars per month and you would get the same type of speed uh, that I'm getting here. But obviously the coolest thing about this is that this is my own VPN server, which means I have full control over it. I know that I'm not being monitored by anyone, which is 
awesome. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you liked it. If you did like this video, please do not forget to leave a thumbs up below. Also leave a comment in the comment section below. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, hit that subscribe button and also turn on the bell icon to receive instant updates from me about my future releases and all that stuff. So thanks for watching once again. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, cheers.